Weekly Standard senior writer, Fox News contributors Stephen Hayes and Juan Williams, columnist for The Hill, Fox News political analyst. Gentlemen, let's start with uh, this, uh, this diplomatic pause, uh, something I've never heard of before. It seems like uh, he wants a delay to find out what in the world the, is going to occur. Uh, Juan? Well, I, I, I agree with you. I don't understand the pause part of it. I mean, of course, everybody wants to avoid military action if possible. But the thing to me, Lou, is how is this punishing Assad for using chemical weapons? And that's why we're here. That's why we're having this moment. And yet, it seems to me, the Russians and Assad have now put themselves in a position where there will be no consequence. I don't know that Assad intended to use his chemical weaponry again, but there should have been, if President Obama is to be believed, some terrible consequence for the use of chemical weapons. And now that's off the table. And how are you going to get it? Are we going to trust the Russians to go in there and get it? Putin? Come on. So I understand that everybody in the United States thinks it's a bad idea. I happen to think it's important that we protect a vital American interest, which is to say to these people that the United States remains a big player in the Middle East and we will take action. Uh, Stephen, to the point of punishment for having used chemical weapons, that uh, punishing Syria does not seem to me to be directly a, a, in, in the American interest, but the principal punish that has been levied by this president so far is just the suspense that is created for Assad as to when he will be attacked. Now the question is whether he eventually will be. Uh, what is your take on what has transpired? Well, look, I mean, you have to look at this to, to think that there is even the possibility of any punishment. You have to believe that Syria will comply with the demands to turn over its chemical weapons to international monitors or whomever. None of these details have even been contemplated yet. Uh, and, and then you have to also ignore the fact that, that the policy that the White House has, has articulated for the better part of a year, Assad must go, seems to have changed. It is now Assad can stay if he turns over his chemical weapons. I mean, is the White House going to, is the president going to continue to push for Assad to go? Is he going to continue to at least talk about arming the, what everybody describes as the moderate vetted opposition? Where exactly does U.S. policy go? And, and if there is no even contemplation of regime change at this point, how is that not a strong victory for Bashar Assad? And one last point, something that's been widely overlooked. It, the, the U.S. climb down on this, the U.S. climb down on these threats of military action came one day after Bashar Assad went on a U.S. television network and made direct threats of, of repercussions and retaliation by terrorist and, and governmental means, perhaps. And then the United States climbs down. Now, people here aren't talking about it in that way as, as a response, but I guarantee you that people in the region are going to read it that way. Well, one of the many confounding absurdities, but maybe, maybe the most overarching uh, peculiarity in this and disconnect uh, for the American people is a president who's ready to go to war, that is to attack a sovereign nation over the deaths of, of at that particular point, 1,300 Syrians by chemical weapons, sarin gas specifically, but willing to ignore the deaths of 100,000 Syrians by conventional means. There is an extraordinary hypocrisy and inconsistency, no intellectual architecture to this president's policy or values whatsoever, Juan. I disagree. I think it's been a muddled performance. I don't think that there's any way you could say this has been a good performance by the administration. Uh, it, it borders on incoherent at times. But I think the one thing that I would pick out and say has been very clear is the president does not want to get involved in Syria's civil war. And by the way, the American people agree. They don't want to get involved in Syria's civil war. And again, we're fighting the ghost of Iraq, the ghost of Afghanistan. But Americans are, to repeat the cliche, war weary, Lou. So, uh, you know, what? he doesn't want to go, and he was saying he was only going to make it very clear, don't use chemical weapons. I happen to agree with that point, but again, I don't think it's carried the day in the national conversation. What you're looking at are the Gallup responses, uh, the responses of Americans uh, to these issues and the ranking of those issues uh, as uh, contributing to their reason to oppose a strike by the United States, compelling reasons every one of them. Uh, none of our business. Don't need another war. Won't do any good. Don't have enough information. 
need United Nations support. Stephen Hayes, the American people, uh, their judgment seems to be so vastly superior to that of uh, President Obama and Senator John McCain and which every other, whichever other senator he seems to be aligned with on the subject at the moment. Uh, why is it so difficult for this president to simply be quiet, not issue ultimatums that he will not enforce, apparently, uh, and to proceed, if you will, uh, far more cleverly? Well, look, it's entirely unsurprising that the American people don't support any intervention at this point in Syria because the president hasn't made a case. I mean, he's largely ignored the, the broader war. Uh, he hasn't spoken much about the, as you point out, 100,000 plus deaths in Syria that have taken place over this two-year period. The president hasn't been talking about this hardly at all. And then all of the sudden pivots, in, including, I should add, previous uses, 14 documented uses of chemical weapons, and then all of the sudden turns on this attack on August 21st and changes his argument so that it becomes crucial for the United States to intervene. I mean, it, it's this dramatic change by the president that I think has Americans sort of scratching their head and saying, why weren't we hearing about this before and why is it so important now? Let's close but very Steve, quickly. If we Steve, may. I'm sorry, go but, ahead, Juan. But Steve, I mean, now we had... Uh, you know, almost incontrovertible evidence of the use of chemical weapons before we it had was it before. in doubt and there was questions False. about whether the rebels had totally used Totally not true. No, I'm sorry, the White House, I was on the White House call in mid-June when they read out the U.S. intelligence community's confirmation of the use of chemical weapons by Bashar Assad's regime. They used they it in June. The president's response yeah. at that point was to talk about sending additional lethal aid. Ben Rhodes, deputy national security advisor Correct. for strategic communications, but it was not came really out and made a statement point. about it. I don't that know about your It was confirmed. It was when, confirmed. When any administration uses the expression incontrovertible evidence of uh, the use of these weapons, and it is challenged by foreign uh, European and specifically intelligence services and some considerable questions about that intelligence itself within our intelligence community. I, I, I tend to be somewhat skeptical and would look for more concrete as difficult it is to obtain uh, evidence uh, than what has at least been put forward so far. That's just my 